people don't call on my birthday anymore. I guess I don't call people on their birthdays. So why should they call me? It's weird aging, right? Youth is wasted on the young. I'd go further. I'd go, life is wasted on people. Hey, Greenberg, what are you doing these days? You know, I've been in New York, but right now I'm really trying to do nothing for a while. That's brave at our age. Dear Starbucks, in your attempt to manufacture culture out of fast food coffee, you have been surprisingly successful for the most part. The part that isn't covered by the most part Say, sucks. I think one of the things I love about the movie is that it, it's so reflective, and I, I think I was surprised that, yeah. that I related so much with Greenberg. Yeah. I mean, do, did you, is this the kind of movie where you kind of learn something about yourself yeah. like, through the, throughout the process? Uh, in terms of watching it or making it? Uh, through, uh, making it. I, I mean, I think making it for, for me, for sure. You know, I had never had a chance to really work on a, a character or a script that was so well-defined uh, on the page. And, um, you know, it sort of forced me to have to sort of uh, figure out where I connected with the guy and where I didn't. And then uh, I guess I ended up having a lot of empathy for the character. And, and because Noah wrote such a real person, I think all the way around, all his characters are always very real and well-defined. And um, I guess I ended up just feeling like I could, could, could connect with what he was going through and or people I know uh, that I'm close to in life who have a similar experience of what he's going through and, and, and feel more empathy for them. So I think that's what's great about Noah's movies is he writes about real people. And, uh, and you can find something, a guy like you can find something in it, you know, even though you're not going through what Greenberg's going through. Right, and then I think that's really what surprised me the most about it. Even just like kind of watching com like his conversations with people, you yeah. know, it, it's almost like, you know, there would be times when I would look at your character and see, I'm like, he just wants them to stop talking so that he can start talking. And I'm just kind of like, you know, exactly. as much as maybe we don't want to admit, how many exactly. times do we often do that? Yeah, that, I mean, that, even just that forced me to look at that myself. You know, I realize how much I don't listen or I'll be listening, but I'm just waiting for somebody to finish talking so I can say something else that they made me think about. Mm -hmm. I do that all the time. And, you know, that's just, Noah is such a, uh, you know, he observes human behavior so well, and, and that's what he's interested in, in writing about and making movies about. I'm impressed by you. In what way? You seem really fine doing nothing. You don't feel all that pressure to be successful. I mean, by other people's standards. What do people say about me? They think you don't make any efforts. I'm making my brother's family a doghouse. Can we take it slow? I just got out of a long relationship and I don't want to go from just having sex to just having sex to just having sex. Who's the uh, third just having sex? You, if we have sex. And you know, I, it really kind of reminded me of like the old like 1970s like Alpert movies where you know where mm -hmm. you're, you're looking into the private lives of these characters and they don't yeah. really make movies like that anymore. And so it was, yeah. it was refreshing to kind of see that. Is it cool to be in the kind of movie that they don't really make anymore? Definitely. <laughs> I mean, you just don't get an opportunity to First of all, be a movie that has a pace like this, where you, he allows it to breathe, and he just allows people to sort of be on screen, and you don't have to be worrying about, you know, just uh, it being funny or keeping an audience engaged, because he trusts the audience is going to be engaged by seeing the reality. And I think he's very influenced by movies of the 70s. He's influenced by movies from the, from the 60s, uh, uh, the French, uh, you know, filmmakers. Uh, uh, you know, he really. Um, I think he just he embraces that that European sensibility, and you know people like Ashby or um, Paul Mazursky, people like that who you know would would make movies about characters, and so it was really fun to to work in that context uh, with a filmmaker who trusted that. He seems vulnerable. My dog is sick. Survival rate is about fifty fifty. This is stupid, but I can't. Catch it, right? I no, mean, no, it's something only dogs can get. I want to be doing nothing. I'm doing nothing deliberately. You like me so much more than you think. You now, talking about, about Noah's, you know, script and how precise it is. I mean, you're famous for for being able to improvise and to ad lib. Is that less of, of a burden now that you don't have to constantly worry about, you know, how can I make this better, that you have to, you know, you're going to stick to these words and this yeah. is how it's going to be? Very much so. It's very freeing. I mean, I, 
you know, when you're given a script that is so well thought out and so well written, and it's it's like a play. You know, when you do a play, people don't go in and start uh, ad living. It's like they're going to you know do the text, and it's as for, I think Noah's process is the same thing. So it forces you as an actor to have to figure out why the person is saying what they're saying, as opposed to making it easier for you to say. You have to back into it and go, okay, well, why why is this character saying that? Because I have to say this. So it just naturally you have to to learn more about who you're playing. So I think that's a really good thing. And, and he writes such good dialogue that it's, it's, it's fun to like have to do the rhythms and, and to nail the rhythms of it. I don't understand what happened to me. It's huge. You finally embraced the life you never planned on. by you kids because your parents were too perfect to parenting all that um baby mozart and dan zane songs you're all add and carpal tunnel hope i die before i end up meeting one of you in a job interview what?